It's been a year. You're doing an awesome job. Pat yourself on the back. Give yourself a round of applause. All right? You're doing very good. I want to give you a rule of thumb, some rules, all right? Since it's been a whole entire year, all right? And even if it hasn't been a year yet, I want to give you some rules to keep in mind, all right? And then some things to just keep you morally sound, keep you sane, all right? First thing is remain humble, remain optimistic, open-minded, stick with God, become a servant to your spiritual talent which will give you the ability to serve people on a grander scale, on a bigger scale. And not just serve them, but impact them and influence them to discover their personal leadership, their kingdom authority, velocity banking, and whatever other spiritual talent that you bring to the table. All right? Now, so a rule of thumb regarding our concept here with our personal finances is continue to read the word right what is the word the word is like your personal constitution it's your self-government all right read it your emergency unexpected unexpected expenses anything that is outside of your normal daily monthly expenses run it through the credit card okay so christmas birthdays new year's thanksgiving black friday you want to spend guilt-free spending. Remember, notice how I, I have that $100 give or take that's there just for you to just call it guilt-free spending. It's okay for you to spend money, all right? But we got to do it wisely. When you do go to use that money, don't use the 100 that's been building. Keep it with the cash flow. Use the credit card. You have the space. And then just what? Pay yourself back. Stuff it there. And what? You never lose your cash flow. Okay? And continue to answer the four major questions of who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? Where am I going? Continue to ponder and think and explore and study. All right? Scripture says, study to show thyself approved unto him. All right? God wants you to study. He wants you to learn. All right? It is the only real moral compass rule to like really follow in life, even if you're someone that does not believe in a higher power. You and I can both agree that studying is a key component to discovering your personal leadership, your authority here on earth, and how you dictate your life or who dictates your life. Without education, you will be ruled by what? Money? A society, a government, people. All right, so it's very important. Let's review where we're at. If we're in month 12, remember, month 10, month 9, we got a raise. Month 10, it came through, right? Usually it takes about a month or, or less to have that raise actually go through, okay? You're making 100 to $200 increase per month for those last three months of the year. So that's an increase of 100 to 200 bucks or so, give or take, might be more. Definitely going to be less, right? Because I went lowest, one dollar to two dollars, like the lowest raise you can possibly get. You know, a quarter raise or, or, or a half a dollar. You know, you are confident, so you want to make sure that you are executing and working, becoming who you are. So, if we were to just average it out and we really think it through, you can safely say that you'll have. In a year, about forty-nine to sixty-three hundred dollars cash flow total. That's just cash flow. You'll still have your money from the expenses that you're just flowing back and forth to the credit and then back out. All right. By year one, you should have, or should have asked, from your secured credit card. By month six, it became unsecured. Capital One gave us more money and refunded us our money and they gave us a higher credit line so we probably went to 1500 and maybe it doubled to 3000 okay here's another rule write this down every three to six months i want you to call capital one 
and apply for an increase on your line of credit. Apply for an extra thousand, extra five hundred. Doesn't matter. Just keep utilizing your credit. Keep using it. Okay. By month, by year one, you should get to about five thousand. All right. And now. You're either from 16 to 17, 18 to 19, right? I mean, 17 to 18, 18 to 19, okay? Or young, you got this cash flow going that's still in your account. You never lost it. You have this credit line that we're still, you're still going to be using it to pay your bills over and over and over again. It does not stop. Now, the next thing that you're probably thinking of, right, or an option to consider to help your life out a little bit more and to give you more responsibility is around this age typically is when you're going to get your first car okay and what I want you to do is some research about whether to lease or buy my recommendation for you is to lease a car, okay? So that we can maintain our cash flow, not lose it, and still have a vehicle to do what? So that we can either work more hours or be more efficient with our time because you're probably either taking a bus, mass transportation, or you're using mom and dad's car, or you're walking, riding a bike, whatever it takes for you to get to and from work, we want to shrink that time that it takes you because if I can get you to work faster and get you home faster, you can sleep longer, you'll have more energy, you get there on time or earlier every single time, that will boost your income even further and give you the ability to work more hours and become who you are and continue to determine an, an, an authority and dictate your authority, your kingdom, ship, leadership, everything be able to harness it more and more all right so so after the first year between the the first six months of the second year okay so I'm gonna fix this okay we're stepping into stepping into year two year two beginning all right we are going to my recommendation lease a car all right it'll be brand new you don't have to worry about anything really all right now again this is a preference you can also buy a car if you're gonna buy a car I recommend buying a used car you know why because you're not gonna have it forever number one number two you're not getting your dream car at this age number three a car is a depreciating asset okay it is simply a tool to be used temporarily to get you further in life faster okay so it's a tool that we need but we want to be effective with the tool okay the advantage of leasing a car is you get a brand new car for a lower monthly payment Okay, you might have a higher insurance payment, but that's okay. It balances out because you don't have to worry about maintenance, changing tires, changing the air filter, changing the this, and, and learning anything really. With a lease vehicle, you are buying, you are paying for convenience. Um, essentially, leasing a car, all right, is convenient. That's it lower payment don't have to worry about maintenance okay you get a certain amount of miles now whether you go the lease like I said or use car just make sure that you get a good deal how do you get a good deal all right listen the same thing you go to a doctor for to get a second opinion on your health or a personal coach to help you get in shape or a financial advisor or a financial coach or consultant to help you or a coach, business coach, a life coach, a mentor. 
you're going to need someone to help you buy a car as well. All right, and here is a service that I use myself and had a wonderful experience with. All right, and I'll have a link for that as well. Auto advisors, very important to take a look at and consider. They are a very wonderful company when it comes to buying, leasing, or owning a used car. All right, so we want to use that. So by year two, we're going to work on getting a car. All right, so that'll be next lesson. Year one, we took care of it. We got good cash flow. We're building our credit. We're doing velocity banking, finding out who we are. Now we're going to step into getting a car. All right, because that's typically what we'll do around that age. Whether mom's going to get it for us, parents, or we do it ourselves. Here's how we're going to do it ourselves. Tune in.